These set of slides describe the behavior of simple networks of connectrons. The, the idea is to show how uh, simple connectron patterns can build up to complex gene expression, non-coding expression uh, behaviors, and to develop a conceptual framework for the Anal for analyzing the behavior of large eukaryotic genomes, or any sort of genome actually. Uh, how these examples work. Uh, there are rules that cause the repression of uh, transcription of, uh, uh, of, an, of a certain gene or, or non-coding element. And these rules are presented in a graphic form. And then there's a musical score that uh, is the simulation of the behavior of these rules. And uh, perhaps the music will actually work for us. We'll see. Um, so here's a, a single uh, region of DNA. It's, it could be a gene or a non-coding event. And uh, it's under promoter control. So if the promoter is on, well, then it will transcribe. And this is uh, expressed by a line here of, in time of the... Uh, the hash marks that say the transcription is on, and uh, it's in this case it's on continually, and, and this is the rule that generates that. So now, if you have two independent uh, regions of DNA that are, could be genes and non-coding, and they're under promoter control, then you they're demoted by each by a line of uh, hash marks that says that they're on all the time. On the other hand, if uh, you send, if this region here sends an RNA to this region here, and it does that all the time because it's, this one is on all the time, well then this other one, the second one, is going to be off all the time, and that's the dots. So the hash marks are on, and the dots are off, and, and these are the rules that are generating whatever behavior you see here in, the, in this region. So now, a one-shot is a, a DNA region, gene coding and non-coding, that turns itself off for a certain length of time, five units of time. So uh, it's on, the hash mark is there, and then there are five dots, and then a hash mark and five dots. So there's a periodicity of five uh, denoted by this number here. So now if, uh, if the first region sends an RNA to the second region, uh, then uh, it's going to cause syncing, and so uh, each one of them will will have a periodicity of five because of this number here. Uh, if you have two independent events with different time constants, well then they're only going to sync occasionally. And so the first one has a periodicity of five and the second one has a periodicity of, of 10. But otherwise the behaviors are not particularly correlated. If on the other hand, the first region sends a connectron to the second region, then you're going to get a, a sinking of the periodicity of, uh, of 10 on the second uh, uh, site over here. Um, if, the, if you change this constant to, from a 10 to a 12, well, then the, the sinking is going to be different. It's going to be longer sinking because, because of the way the, beating, the two uh, things are beating against each other. If the periodicity is less here, then uh, this one is going to be synced, the second is going to be synced to the first, and so that we produce the behavior that we saw before. If you change it to a seven, you're going to get a different sort of thing. So each time you play around with this uh, constant here, let alone this one here, let alone that one, you're going to get different uh, forms of behavior. So now if you have uh, three uh, forms of three different transcription sites, and two of them are coupled and one of them is, is independent, well then the third one is going to have a periodicity determined by, by this constant here. Again, it's all just rules. So now if uh, one sends to two and three sends to two, well then two is going to be shut off all the time. And again, this is just, just based on what the rules are saying. And the rules represent what the graphics are. Um, so uh, here you see that uh, these two guys, one and three, are beating on port two, so that two is always shut off, no matter what it wants to do. If, on the other hand, uh, three was beating on two, and uh, so one is going to be independent, and two and three is going to determine the, the sinking to two, you're going to get this form of behavior. And so now, if you have this connectivity where uh, three sends to one and one sends to two, you're going to get this form of behavior, okay? That is, to get this syncing and periodicities and so forth and so on. So, uh, 
Again, all determined by the rules, not by me, just by the rules in the program. Okay, so the, the rule, the program's always the same and the rules change because the connectivity's changing and the constants are changing. So now if we have uh, a different set of parameters, uh, we're going to get a different set of behaviors. Okay, and uh, so now if we have two uh, different uh, um, uh, independent sets of three uh, transcription sites, we're going to get six uh, the lines of behavior of the six different transcription sites, uh, but uh, these three are going to be correlated and synced together, and these are going to be synced together, but the two of them are independent. So now if we introduce just one uh, connectron, trans uh, connectron transmission between the upper group and the lower group, well, the behavior is going to be, again, completely different, okay, and, uh, and so, and much more complex, okay. So now, uh, uh, that's what it says. And so if you change which, uh, which element you have from this to, to that, uh, again, the behavior is going to be, and you want to look at this in detail, perhaps uh, is going to be uh, uh, completely different. So now if you take two sets that are independent, uh, each of six, uh, but, but the upper is always connected to the lower by some connectron transmission thing, you're going to have 12 sets of behavior. Uh, only this one set of six is independent from the other set of six. And now if you introduce just, in this case, just one um, f uh, thing, then you're going to have um, a, a, yet a different form of behavior, very much more complex. Now, um, so what I'd like to argue is that uh, you could consider these, just these 12 um, uh, transcription sites to be a toy connectron. Okay, because clearly the behavior of this um, uh, set of uh, transcription sites, uh, all of them being one shots in this case, um, the behavior is controlled by the interaction of the sets of, of sites with each other, as I've shown you. Okay, so this is what connectrons do. <laughs> and we only have 12, and uh, so this is a, a toy genome. Uh, because it's just 12. Uh, so in other talks you'll see that the real uh, connectrons are uh, really very much more complex. There are hundreds of thousands of connectrons involved in them and uh, many many chromosomes, you know, 23 chromosomes in the case of human. So um, the, uh, the, the gap between this simple um, set of uh, demonstrations of topology mm -hmm. and connectivity and behavior, and the real one are are very real, uh, but uh, but uh, but still the model I think is uh, applicable and uh, you know generates insight. So uh, connectrons that are formed by binding of RNA to double strand DNA have uh, finite lifetimes, which means that you're going to get behavior. As a result, the connectrons form networks of temporal control of gene expression, uh, gene coding, and non-coding expression. The effect of one-shots is to convert an amplitude-modulated system into a frequency-modulated system. We saw this very nicely uh, because the promoters can be doing their own thing in a gross way that promoters work, but it's the uh, effect of the one-shots that have the uh, hugest effect on behavior and in particular this pulsing that the one-shots do uh, converts it from an amplitude modulated system, which is what the promoters do, into a frequency modulated system. And, and we've seen that frequency modulated systems are much more stable to noise, um, noise being uh, changes in the DNA of the connectrons, which would uh, tend to change the behavior. So uh, this is a, a really a very nice uh, uh, demonstration of how uh, very simple uh, networks of connectrons uh, form very complex forms of behavior and then provides an analog, uh, a conceptual analog to going to uh, doing this for complete genomes.